Today, I'm gonna to update you on my Apple Espalier project and how it's going. And to be honest, it's not all going great. So we have a bit of a mystery to solve. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on. I don't know what it's called, but there's this thing where every time that I say that I'm excited about something in the garden, it seems like the next day something horrible happens and it all goes terribly wrong. And that's sort of the situation with my apple espalier right now. So I'm kind of hoping that by sharing that in this video, by sharing these problems with y'all, that maybe suddenly things will turn around and be awesome. I don't know, it's worth hoping. So let me start by giving you just a little bit of a recap about this espalier project. So last year, about a year ago this time, I set up this apple espalier space on the back of my garden fence. I set up a whole wire trellis and planted two apple trees. One is called Ein Schimer and one is Anna. Now, um, I'll link to that video so you can check that out. And what ended up happening is that the Ein Schimer tree didn't make it. It just never succeeded. It died all of a sudden. And um, it was probably transplant shock or it could have just been something wrong with the tree, which is very possible. Um, now, I was able to, thankfully, find another tree. This spring I replanted. It's doing great. It's leafed out. It's ready to begin training. That's the good news. Now, the other tree that I planted last year, Anna, is did awesome. It was so happy last year. It grew really vigorously, got a good start on the espalier. And so much to my surprise and um, mourning, <laughs> It has yet to leaf out this year. It's the end of April. It should have leafed out. It should have woken up, I don't know, maybe months ago. Um, it, the buds have been swelling. It looks like it's about to leaf out, but it has looked like that for at least six weeks. So something is going on. Something has gone terribly wrong. And I am determined to just figure out what it is. I don't know if it's something that I did, if it's just one of those things, maybe there's something wrong with the tree, but I want to examine everything and see if I can figure out if there's anything I can do at this point to turn it around. So let's take a little bit of a closer look. So here she is, this is Anna. You can see um, it got a good start on the bottom two tiers of the espalier last year. Not a leaf in sight. First of all, you may be wondering, are you sure it's not dead? And yes, I am very sure for lots of reasons. For one thing, it, it just doesn't look dead. You know, that, that really twiggy, dry, kind of could break off really easily, brittle look of a dead branch. None of that in sight. Um, and to be just triple sure, this morning I got out my grafting knife and just very carefully scratched off a little bit of the bark here at the trunk, bright green underneath, which is a sign that it's very much alive. I did the same thing on one of these top branches, very green, so still completely alive. So what else could it be? Disease. I see nothing that looks like it could be disease. I see no fungus, I see nothing growing, I see no slimy spots, no crusty spots, nothing. It looks great. It really, really does. Could it be damaged from the cold? Maybe some of the buds were damaged. Well, for one thing, we had a fairly mild winter. Um, and, you know, that could affect um, whether or not the tree gets enough chill hours. But Anna is a very low chill variety. It only needs like 200 to 300 chill hours. And I know for a fact that I got at least 700 because right next door is my peach tree and it is full of fruit. And that's how many chill hours that that particular peach variety needs. So I know I got enough chill hours, but we didn't have any late frosts. So um, I'm really, I don't think there was any cold damage. And again, I look at these buds and they don't look like they're damaged at all. So those are all sort of the visible things that I can check. But what about other factors? So what about drainage? You know, we talk a lot about soil drainage and how important it is for everything, but especially for fruit trees. Well, if you've watched any of my videos before, you You've heard me talk about the fact that my soil is really, really sandy, which has its issues, but the good thing about that is it drains really, really well. So I know that drainage isn't a problem. I know it's not sitting in really waterlogged, soggy soil. Now, one of those problems with sandy soil is nutrients. This soil that I have here, quote unquote soil, it doesn't do a good job of holding on to nutrients. So that made me think, well, maybe it's not getting 
the nutrients that it needs to come out of dor dormancy. And that is possible. Now, I did fertilize. I used a granular organic fertilizer early in the spring because I do that with all of my fruit trees because all of those trees have that same issue. Um, but then when I started to notice this delay in the tree waking up, I went ahead and used some liquid fertilizer, which is not something that I would typically do with an in-ground tree because like the water, the liquid fertilizer is just gonna drain through really quickly and it doesn't have any benefit long-term. But in the short term, it can give a plant a bit of a boost. And so that's what I was trying to do, thinking, well, maybe the plant needs a boost of nutrients to wake it up. Um, that was a couple weeks ago, nothing yet. So now that I've exhausted all the possibilities of what I can observe on the tree um, and what I can recall as far as how I've cared for it, and none of those seem to be the problem. So the only thing left is to now carefully see what's going on below the soil surface. So a couple of things have occurred to me. Um, for one thing, root knot nematodes tend to be a problem in areas of sandy soil. They cause these kind of knobbly knots, kind of balls all over a, a root system and can slowly kill a tree over time. So that's a possibility. Um, another thing that I thought of is um, root girdling. It's possible that as it's continued to grow that the roots have continued to kind of spiral and might be sort of choking the tree, choking themselves out rather than spreading out throughout the ground. So that's something to look for. And so now we get to it because I think I might have figured out the reason or what the particular problem is here. And that is, I wonder if I planted the tree too deep. So most fruit trees are grafted. I don't think this one was grafted. I remember looking when I planted it and I didn't notice any graft union. So I figured, okay, well maybe it's not a grafted fruit tree. Um, but now I'm starting to doubt myself. And the other thing that occurs to me is that I don't see the root flare. So root flare is that part at the bottom of a tree where a tree kind of goes into the ground and it widens out just a little bit and that's a sign that it's, it's starting to spread into root growth. And I can show you what I mean in one of the big giant pine trees in my backyard. You can see at the base of the tree, it widens out. Well, this tree is doing no such thing. And so I'm starting to suspect that I planted it too deep. Um, and that can cause all sorts of problems. So now that I have these ideas and some suspicions, the only thing left is to get digging and to see what's going on. So I've already dug down three or four inches and I still haven't seen any roots. So that tells me I think my hypothesis is correct because if I had planted this the right way, and what was I thinking, Diana, of a year and a half ago, but if I would planted this the right way, the roots should be just under the surface of the soil. And so that's how they can get the water and things that they need. Um, and that is definitely not the case. So I'm gonna keep digging and see where I can figure out the top of the root ball is. Okay, so I've gone just a little bit deeper and I'm starting to see where roots are beginning. But I'm a good six inches down, so I am way too deep. The other thing I see is something that very might well be the graft union. It's not really pronounced, but I think this might be the graft union and that might explain that these, this tree's roots are just buried too deep. The good news is the roots don't seem damaged in any way, and I know the tree grew well last year. So here's what I think I need to do now. I don't think I have any choice, but I need to try to dig up this tree and just set it up a little bit higher. Um, I'm gonna have to be really, really careful because I wanna save this tree. I don't want <laughs> a year's worth of work to be wasted, um, but the alternative, I think, is to just watch it die slowly over time. So I really have no choice. I'm gonna be as careful as possible. You know, I'm also gonna really try not to be too hard on myself because this is a mistake that I made, and frankly, I knew better. Um, but it just, it happened. In the busyness of planting and getting the espalier done, I missed it. I've definitely learned from this.
So here's my newly lifted Anna apple tree. And I had to lift it about six inches. I used the shovel to sort of just lever the root ball up once I loosened all the soil and just packed soil underneath it. I tried to disturb the roots as little as possible so that hopefully it's not too um, stressed out by the whole situation. But I can't help but wonder, how did I mess up so bad? How did I miss this? This is something that I know. Um, for one thing, I think I just, I just simply made a mistake. I just buried it too deep in the hurry of planting and making the trellis and all that. I just messed up. But on top of that, soil settles over, over time. It probably settled as we had rain and time went on. Um, we mulched on top, so maybe as the mulch broke down, that soil level built up so maybe my mistake wasn't quite as big as six inches but that's where it ended up and as you can see it looks a little funny <laughs> because these bottom branches that I had trained along the wires are now six inches above the wire so it looks really strange um, I'm just gonna let it grow hopefully if things go according to plan this tree will now wake up and leaf out and have the whole rest of the season to continue to grow um, I wasn't worried about getting apples this year anyway. I was planning to pull off any blossoms um, so that it could concentrate on filling out the espalier shape. Um, so as these grow, I may just train them downward and it may just have a little bit of a weird look, um, but we'll see. Maybe some of these lower buds will wake up and I'll decide to train new lateral branches. I don't know. We're just gonna see how it goes. I just figure if this thing gets some leaves on it, it's a win <laughs> because that was not what was happening before. Um, worst case scenario, it doesn't make it. It gets stressed out and it dies and I have to replace it. And that's certainly a possibility, but at least I've done everything that I can think of to do to try to prevent that from happening. I mean, that's gardening, right? It's troubleshooting. It's looking around and seeing the things that are going on in your garden, um, what you can do to fix them, how you can prevent them for next time. And it is humbling at every every turn because no matter how much experience I gain, no matter um, what I've done well in the past many times, like plant trees, um, mistakes still happen. Stuff still happens. And um, it's, it's a good reminder <laughs> that it's, that learning process never stops. And that's certainly not going to stop me from trying things like espalier. So um, I could use a little encouragement right now. So if you uh, would, please reach out in the comments. Let me know what's a mistake you've made in the garden that you have turned around um, or you know just just encourage each other that uh, mistakes in the garden aren't the end of the world it's part of what makes our thumbs greener you know I didn't start with a green thumb but it's gotten greener over the years and this is how by making mistakes and learning from them thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video do you see green I see green it worked